Good afternoon and welcome to the fourth episode of the Ludgate Propeller Series. The Propeller Series is a series of informative workshops for the startup businesses and scaling businesses across many sectors and industry types. Um, this event today will be recorded and we would encourage questions through the chat function. Um, I will then filter through those questions to our speaker today, who is Judy Hopkins of Hopkins Communication. Before I introduce Judy, let me just introduce myself. My name is Fiona Ryan. I'm Startup and Entrepreneurship Manager with the Lowgate Hub here in Skibbereen. The Lowgate Hub is a 10,000 square foot facility uh, which houses anchor tenants, a co-working space, hot desks, full-time membership and part-time membership. Amongst all of those great things and what's encompassed here within the four walls of Lowgate, we also have many community programmes spread across many different pillars. We have the education programme, which serves 16 primary schools and three secondary schools, for which we have enabled Google for Education, Microsoft 365, refurbished and distributed many laptops, and also Lego for Education pet camps and Silver Surfers. We also have then the food and agri side of things, and we have the startup and entrepreneurship uh, programme. That programme is all housed within the Lowgate website. If you'd like to reach out to me for any further information, I'll put my contact details into the chat. Uh, it's a very comprehensive and supportive program for startups here in the West Cork region. Now, today's episode is all about communication and communicating to the different stakeholders in business. Um, and from the get-go, uh, from the outset, uh, it's all about communication. And uh, so it's a very, very important topic. Uh, it's about getting the message right, identifying who your particular target audience is, because they can be many when you're starting um, and as you progress through business the dissemination of that information and the op optimal results that you're looking for. So on that note, I would like to introduce you to Judy Hopkins of Hopkins Communication. Now I'm scripted for this, Judy, because your uh, CV is absolutely fantastic and I want to give it justice. So 20 years ago, Judy Hopkins started um, out in PR events, digital media and marketing industry, working in-house uh, retail, tourism and technology marketing roles, followed by international marketing agency positions, and then on to the family business. 12 years ago, she introduced Hopkins Communication online and digital media offering, expanding the PR and events offering while working across all of their other services, such as advertising, promotions, exper experimental uh, marketing, experiential marketing, sorry, graphic design and more. And they've celebrated 32 years in business in Hopkins Communication, working with clients from startups, SMEs through to multinationals. Judy was recently named Businesswoman of the Month by RSVP. Congratulations, Judy. Well deserved. And also most influential Cork One. Judy is an active member of the Public Relations Institute of Ireland, Network Ireland, Cork Chamber, uh, Cork Chamber, where she also sits on the Chamber Annual Dinner Task Force, and the Cork Business Association. She is also a former chair of the Marketing Institute of Ireland uh, and former founding chair of the British and Irish Trading Alliance Cork Chapter. Judy was also a radio host with her show, The Business uh, Hour on Cork City Community Radio, where she interviewed Cork and Ireland's top business minds about their journeys through business, including their challenges, highlights, learnings, and tips for listeners. So Judy, welcome, and thank you for taking your time out today to come on and talk to the Logate audience on this uh, Propeller episode. Uh, we're delighted to have you. And um, as I say, that's some CV. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fiona. Thanks for having me. And hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, delighted to be here today. Um, I remember when Ludgate was first set up way back when, and we were involved in Digital Week. Um, and, and Baltimore actually be, actually is my second home. So it's, it's great to be uh, amongst my fellow West Corkonians. Um, I'd like to also give a shout out to Mary Hopkins, who has joined the, the, the audience today. She's our founder. So a lot of the successes of Hopkins Communications are actually down to her, Fiona. So um, yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna share my screen now um, and uh, tell you a little bit about us and why it is that you should be listening to us today um, and we can we can take it from there. Now, can you all see that okay? Yes, that's perfect. Great, thank you. So first of all, if I can 
get the screen to work. There we go. Um, so who we are. So as Fiona highlighted, we were established in 1990. We're an integrated marketing communications agency um, and we're headquartered in Cork with offices in Limerick and Dublin. But we also have um, a partnership with 3AW Network of Agencies, which services 30 countries worldwide. So not only do we assist those um, agencies in their own countries, but then obviously if their brands or their clients are looking to push themselves out in Ireland, then we would work with them as their agency. We have 18, actually now we have 20, we've just hired two new, uh, uh, two new team members, um, full-time employees, or as I say, team members, I don't like the word employees, um, in Hopkins Communications, and we work with over 60 part-time promotional staff, um, in addition to partner companies and contract workers. So on the right-hand side there, you will see the majority of our team, including Mary, who's up on the top right, and Dave, our chairman, who's up on the top left, and then in the blue there at the top is Mark Hopkins, my business partner and our managing director. So awards are key to uh, getting your communication strategies out there. And you'll see here that we have been either finalists or winners in a number of various awards, one of which we were very proud of two years ago, which was the Cork Chamber Cork Company of the Year uh, SME category. It was our first year entering the awards and we got to the finals, which was fantastic. I'm sure a lot of you go to the annual dinner where you'd have over a thousand people in City Hall. Um, so it was great to be showcased across all of that and the, the, the coverage that we got from it ourselves was, was fantastic. Um, so yeah, moving on, I won't go through my bio, but uh, Fiona has already covered all of that, so I'll move on. Um, so yeah, you'll see just a kind of a glimpse of our client list um, here, ranging from international to national and regional, you know, large corporations, SMEs, brands, festivals, events, state bodies, charities, etc. We've also worked with a lot of West Cork um, organisations. A Taste of West Cork Food Festival is one of our favourite uh, clients to work with. And Helen Collins, they're based in Skib and Baltimore, is a very good friend of ours. We've worked with Carberry Group. We've worked with the Maritime Hotel in Bantry, Dunmore House Hotel, um, and lots, lots more. Um, so we do love the West Cork region. So today's agenda, um, just to give you an overview, I'll go through what is communications, first of all, and then as a result, what is PR? Um, where do you start if you're looking at doing a PR campaign and creating that, what the activities are within PR, how to write a press release, some photography tips, media relations, other PR activities, and then some final tips. And Fiona has um, advised me that she will be keeping an eye on questions coming through, so feel free to pop them through in the chat. Um, and then Fiona can pose the questions at the end of my presentation. Um, and Fiona, feel free to uh, tell me to hurry up if I'm still rabbiting on past my time. <laughs> okay, so first of all, what is communication or communication? So as Fiona nicely uh, put it in the overview of the event, communication in business involves relaying information from one source to another to convey a specific message in order to attain a desired reaction or result. There are a number of types of communications in business, such as strategic communications, media relations, community relations, internal communi uh, communications, crisis communications, public affairs and online and social media communications. But all of these fall within the scope of integrated marketing communications. And more specifically, um, they all ha have an element or actually are part of public relations. So with that, what is public relations? So public relations is, is a strategic communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and their publics. So that's quoted from the PRSA, which is obviously uh, um, a, 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 an umbrella um, entity for PR. Uh, what's the difference between marketing and PR? So marketing is telling people what you think of yourself, whereas PR is influencing what other people think of you. Again, it's part of the integrated marketing communications mix. So it's always good to have an integrated approach, depending on your budgets. You know, you might start out with a bit of PR and a bit of content digital marketing. But it, as your budget is higher, go, gets higher, you might want to integrate some advertising. So you could be doing paid social, programmatic display advertising, 
billboards, buses, TV, radio, um, you've events, so you could do launch events, promotions, you know, handing out flyers or doing drink samplings, web design, uh, photography, videography, the list is endless. A little kind of a recap of, of communications and PR over the centuries. So way back when in ancient Egypt, they used to use hieroglyphics. Uh, then moving on to the 14th century, they would have had messengers um, and paintings, for example. Um, then you had the likes of town criers ringing their bells through the towns um, and a little bit of press. And then into the 19th century, you had press and telegraph. And the 20th century, it introduced radio and telephone. Um, and today then uh, you have press, radio, television, internet, etc. And you'll see here that a lot of the key timeframes that I've highlighted are surrounding pandemics. Um, so you'll see the bubonic plague, smallpox, Spanish flu, HIV. So it's interesting to see, you know, post pandemic, well, kind of post pandemic at the moment, what all of the, what the world did uh, during those pandemics. So public relations at Hopkins Communications. So we have strategic, innovative and cost effective public relations campaigns that we create to influence public opinion and exceed our clients' objectives. So the activities within our public relations strategies include media relations, creative photo shoots, uh, sponsorships, launch events, promotions, speaker platforms like today, for example, um, opportunities and other like product placements, etc. So you're asking, okay, where do I start with a PR campaign? First thing to do is to think smart. So make sure that it's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So with that, you need to remember four W's and a H. So who is your audience? What is your message? What's the hook, the call to action? What differentiates you, appeals to your audiences? So make it timely and topical as well. When do you want it to land? Where do you want it to land? And where are you targeting geographically? How are you going to get the message out there? And then what are the PR activities then that you're going to do within that? Going back to being smart and thinking smart. So if it's specific, obviously that, need, that goes around your messaging. So you need to make sure that you're very specific and factual in terms of your messaging, but you also want to make it creative at the same time. You want it to be measurable. So can you track the progress and measure the outcome? Now, PR is quite um, a difficult one um, to prove its worth, to prove the return and investment. Um, but here at Hopkins Communications, we do very fulsome media coverage reports and evaluations uh, that we give to the client at the end of a campaign. Uh, we also, you can also get media monitors that can monitor press, radio, online coverage so that you can see the return on your investment. How much, how many, or how will I know when my goal is accomplished? Um, so just consider all of these elements. Uh, attainable, so is the goal reasonable enough to be accomplished and how so? So sometimes, you know, we might have someone come to us saying, oh, um, I just opened an office there and there's myself and one other person working there and we want to do a PR campaign around that. Um, what you need to think about there is what's the hook? So great, you've opened an office, but down the road, there was a new office that was created, that was, uh, that's gone up and it's hiring 200 people. So there's 200 local jobs there. So that's their hook. So what's your hook? What differentiates you? Are you a high tech startup? Um, are you offering something that, um, you know, no one else is doing? So what differentiates you? Um, so make sure that it's a reasonable goal, that if you're investing in something that, you know, there's a good enough hook there for people to engage with it. Um, make sure that it's not out of reach or, as I said, below standard performance. Make sure it's relevant and worthwhile. Is it worthwhile and will it meet your needs? Um, in each goal, you know, is each goal consistent with other goals you've established and does it fit with your immediate and long term plans? And timely, so the when. So your objective should include a time limit. Um, so I complete this step by month, day, year. Um, you want to, especially with public relations, it needs to make you need to make sure that um, it's not old news by the time you go out with the message. So if it's been covered by someone or somewhere already, uh, then the chances of pickup would be slightly less. Um, 
So it'll establish a sense of urgency and prompt you to have a b- better time management. Now, I know there are a lot of things like if you take, for example, you know, signing a lease with a new building, you might think that the lease will be signed by X date. But we all know that these things are pushed out and pushed out. So, yes, timelines change and they are fluid. But, you know, just make sure that you put a plan in place before you execute. Creating a PR campaign. So step to take within that are ideation. So again, this is coming up with your messaging, coming up with your hook, coming up with creative photography concepts to go out with your press release. Um, the planning stage then is obviously, you know, the uh, the photography brief for the photographer, the writing of the press release, getting all of your um, key facts in there, getting your call to action in there. And the execution then obviously is the dissemination. So the dispatch of the release and the pictures to the media, um, following up to secure your call or to secure coverage, pitching in for profiles, pitching in if you're a restaurant, for example, pitching recipes from your restaurant in um, you know if you're a particular product pitching it in for product gift guides etc and then the measurement as I mentioned is the whole media monitoring side of things so you can do that yourself when it comes to online you can do it in terms of listening to the radio you can you know measure it from a point of view of um, buying all of the papers in the world that you think that you've sent it to um, but really I, I would I would invest in media monitoring and also Google Alerts actually is a very good measurement tool uh, to see where you're being mentioned, how often and the value of that. So what are PR activities? General activities include obviously the first and most important thing is the research. So who obviously once you have your target audience and all of that side of things set out, you then need to look at who you're targeting to get the message out there. So who are the media that you're targeting? What kind of stories are they covering? Um, Make a media list and make your story relevant to that media. So a lot of people think, oh, sure, I can do PR myself. I'll just write a release and I'll throw it out to everybody. The spray and pray effect doesn't really work. Um, You need to, you know, target the media accordingly. So, for example, if you're doing, and the next bullet point is creative press releases, if you're doing a press release and you're sending it to the press, then that's well and good. But you need to shorten that, bullet point it and make it more relevant for broadcast, i.e. radio or television. Think, for example, if you're listening to a news story on the radio, they're not going to read out two A4 pages of a press release. They're going to read, you know, maybe three or four lines. You know, what's the quick, what's the hook, what's the call to action? And you're done. Um, And then with online, obviously, then we all know how important search engine optimization is and being found in Google and other search engines. So make sure that you're including keywords that relate to you and your business um, within the press release that you're sending the online desks or the digital desks. So the creative releases are to tell your story. And then you've got the photography, which is to show your story. So sometimes in the papers, there might not be enough column inches for an actual written story to be put in. So they might have a space where they want to put a picture in. So that's where your photography will come in handy. Sometimes you'll get both, of course, which is great, which is the ideal. Um, But you can do some really creative photo shoots. And again, I'll go through tips for photography down the line. Um, really creative tips for photography. Um, And then what you can do is you can have your photo and an elongated caption. So it's a slightly longer caption um, than normal when it's just a photo that they're including about your story. Then you've got the pitching, which is, you know, you're pitching your release in, but you also need to think about your pitch email to the journalists. So again, don't just be like, hi, see press release below. Again, find the hooks like you would for the radio release, have the actual hooks in the first line, make sure your subject line in your email is going to catch their attention um, and start from there. So you've got your release when you send it to them, you know, follow up with them, then pitch maybe the head person within your business for interviews. Make sure you get a head and shoulders of your key um, team members to pitch them in for profiles. Um, If it's products, pitch them in for product reviews, send product and media drops to the the media. Um, Recipes, again, top tips, opinion pieces, things like that. The goal here is to make the journalists' lives easier and to make it timely and topical. So whatever 
you want included, make sure that you're sending that to the journalist and you're you're flagging what you're sending them. Um, I'll talk to you about attachments and things like that further on when I'm talking about the photography as well. Um, but again, when I say make it timely and topical as well, you know, for example, when the pandemic first started, um, we were working with Rasher, which are now Ocean Ore. Um, Tom is actually, uh, he spends a lot of time in Baltimore. I think he's from Carrigaline. And we were promoting his um, sustainable masks. So he actually makes rash vests and the likes um, that are made from uh, recycled ocean waste. And when the pandemic hit, he pivoted to um, create uh, the sustainable masks. So again, these masks were made from recycled ocean waste. They had filters, they had everything. So that was timely and topical. And he got great coverage from the campaign we did with him because we were jumping on something that was topical. How do I write a release? So this is probably something you'll want to screenshot. This is the, um, the inverted triangle of writing a press release. Um, before you begin, uh, you, can, you can hold off a second. Remember again who you're talking to and what you're, who, what you're talking about. So each brand will have its own tone of voice. Each press release needs an angle, a point. Why are you writing this? Try to write your release with coverage in mind. So again, you're tailoring the release to the media you're targeting and the audiences you're trying to reach. So again, if you're trying to push um, you know, a business story, then it's probably not worth sending it to the likes of a, you know, a celeb or an entertainment um, type journalist. You know what I mean? So just think about that. Be impactful, factual and creative. I'm just going to let that inverted triangle there um, sit there for a minute so you can take a photo or a screenshot, whichever you prefer. So this is the basic structure of a press release. So you have the headline and the subheader. Similar to the, the subject line of your email, the headline and the subheader are what gets the attention um, for, for the journalists, right? And the subheader then will, will explain more detail into the headline. The next piece then is the story in a sentence. So again, it's like a hook, it's like your elevator pitch, you know, what are you gonna say in that sentence to try and sum up everything you need to say in one small paragraph. Then you go into telling them a little bit more and more details of the story and what they need to know. Um, and also, you know, if it's a case that the hook for your release isn't really the message you want to get across. So, for example, if we take that example of a building uh, that someone has signed a lease and they're creating 200 jobs, they might be the first to sign a release in, in, in this wonderful new development, which could be the hook. But they're, um, you know, they're, what they want to get across is that they want to recruit. They want to get people to apply for jobs. Um, so if the message had already been out there, for example, that they already mentioned, that they already launched, that they're, you know, creating 200 jobs, then that's old news. So the new hook to push again for the recruitment side of things is, the, is that they've signed this lease. Um, so in the, you know, in the tell them more part of it, this is where you put in about them, you know, that they're continuing to recruit for um, the 200 jobs that they've announced or whatever it might be. Then you have a quote from your spokesperson. So generally speaking, that's your most senior person within the team. Um, alternatively, it's the expert within your team relevant to whatever it is you're talking about. Um, so um yeah it's i just see a typo there now this is wrote by us oh my god i'm going to shoot myself that's an accident um so that needs to be approved obviously if you're quoting someone within your business you need to get them to approve that before you send it out then the wrap it up one thing that i notice a lot in press releases that people have written over the years is there's no call to action so yeah, you're recruiting, but how do I actually apply for a job? So make sure that you, you know, at the end, you'd say for more information, see blah, 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 dot com forward slash careers or follow them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. cetera. Um, so, you know, what can, where can they buy it? Where can they apply? You know, what's, what do you want them to do after reading this press release? And then your contact information. So for, for if they want to arrange an interview, that they would contact you. Um, and then at the end, then you have your boilerplate and your notes to editors, things like that. Any additional information 
you have about your business or about, you know, what types of jobs you're recruiting for or whatever, you would have that in your editor's notes. One huge thing that um, I've seen a lot of PR practitioners forget about is the digital desk. So as we all know, digital has become huge in the last 12 or so years. Um, digital um, news reporting has grown exponentially over the last, we'll say, four or five years. So we need to remember that newspapers and medias are still businesses and they've pivoted to the digital world. So, yes, they may still have the press or the radio side of things, but they also have an online presence and they do get quite a lot of hits to those. So they're increasingly led by Google and web analytics to determine the, the, the content that they publish online. So, again, look at the content that they're publishing and make your release relevant to how they write or to the things that they cover. Um, numbers and unique visitors to the site, page views and all that are very important for the media um, because online revenue is critical to them and their continued survival. So think about that, that whatever you're sending them, it needs to be something that they will get clicks from. <laughs> Um, pay attention to the websites and what they publish, as I said. Um, you'll see a lot of the times that there's a lot of similar content going on or follow up pieces or live blogs. Um, you know, if something performs well, then they'll add to it to try and push it up even further. Um, like if you take, for example, RTE.ie during the pandemic, when, you know, the, the Taoiseach was making his announcements, RTE had a live feed happening on their website where you could see live updates as to what was going on and loads of people were tuning in for that. So the amount of hits that they would have got from that would have been phenomenal. And then there's the whole cookie side of things where, you know, once you're on the site, it'll follow you around and you'll get served ads to go back to that site to look at more things. Now, cookies is a whole different ballgame now, because so, as some of you may know, that's being eradicated um, from a GDPR point of view. So that's a whole different uh, days training as such. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, online content um, can differ from their newspaper content. So consider, consider writing both um, and tailored pieces. Uh, print will generally be more newsy and factual with stats and figures and quotes, but the online articles then will be quite shorter. Um, they'll be like listicles, as we like to call them. So top 10 places to visit in West Cork, or they can use embeds. So like they could be embedding a YouTube video that you created or an Instagram post or Instagram video that you created. So again, when you're building all of your media materials, if you can include video brilliant to do that. Like we were doing, um, when we were doing the Core Culture Night PR campaign uh, last year, uh, while we were at the photo shoot, we just got some footage on our phone of some of our models for the photo shoot, um, doing some stuff like jumping off rocks and things like that, but they were all dressed up as puppets. And we took that video and we fed that into Cork Bio, who we had on board as the their online media partner. And they fed that into their live feed and put it up on their socials as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to be professional, um, but I would definitely use a certified PR photographer. Um, uh, but when it comes to the video, then if it's for online, sometimes they are OK to use, you know, what's what the content is from your phone if, it, if they feel that it's good enough. Um, so online is really where they capitalize on topical events like St. Patrick's Day, Culture Night, like I mentioned, Mother's Day, any significant dates um, where, you know, most online is where most online media will be doing pieces for their search engine optimization. Because, again, you know, we're all probably going into Google and we're searching Mother's Day presents. Um, don't worry, Mom, I haven't forgot about you. Um, <laughs> we're searching Mother's Day presents. And so you can be sure that there are online sites there that are doing, we'll say Yay Cork, for example, would be doing a piece on, um, you know, top 10 gifts to buy your mom for Mother's Day. So that's all going into their search engine optimization. And if you click into it, if you, if you type into Google Mother's Day presents, you click into that article, that's going to help with their ranking. That's going to help with their performances. Um, it's the same with the Southern Star. The Southern Star do this all the time too. They do fantastic articles online, but again, they'll do a version of an article in the, in the paper and then another version online. 
Um, so yeah, just be more open to online platforms, go where your audience is and not where you want them to be. So again, sometimes people want to be seen in a particular publication um, or, you know, featured in a particular media house, whereas is your audience actually there? Are you just doing that for vanity reasons? So think sanity rather than vanity. So on photography. Again, remember the four W's and a H, so the who, what, when, where, how. As I mentioned, use an accredited press folk photographer where possible, and there's some great press photographers down in West Cork. Uh, talk to your photographer, you know, tell them what your ideas are for the creative photo shoot and say to them, OK, what do you think? They're, I mean, at the end of the day, you know what's going to land for your client, but as their press photo, or for yourself, sorry, I'm thinking as the as the PR practitioner, not as the internal, you know what, what's, you know, what you'd like to land. Um, but the photographer, because they're press photographers, they might want to, they might, they will have ideas as how they think something will work. So do up a brief for them, see what they think of it. They'll add more creative ideas into it. Um, make sure that when you get the photos back that they're high resolution quality and that they're at least two megabytes or 300 dpi in size if it's going out to media or if it's for use in printed collateral. Uh, try not to have more than two or three people in the picture, less is more. Like if you pick up any of the papers, you'll see that generally speaking, the pictures that land on the front page or the back page generally tend to have only one or two people in them. So think about that, think about creative shots with two or three people in it. Um, be positive and, engage and engaging and not too complex. Diversity obviously is key at the moment. The papers want to be seen to be promoting diverse um, imagery, etc. Action shots work as well, as long as they're not blurry. So, you know, a walking shot or, you know, a dancing shot or something like that. The media love colour children and animals. So, again, some of you may have seen some of the shots that we did for A Taste, a Taste of West Cork Food Festival over the years. There's lots of colourful food in the shots and then there's some beautiful local kids in the shots as well. And they land, they work. Uh, props are good too. So as I said there, you know, for Taste West Cork Food Festival, we had food uh, in the shots and we had, we'll say the last live one that we did was tied in with Twinned with Australia. Um, so we had a big didgeridoo in the shot as well. So think about that kind of, uh, those kind of props that are relevant to your story. Um, models, if you're hiring models or if your friends are hopping into the shot for you or whatever, Make sure that you um, ask them to wear bright black color clothing um, without patterns because patterns can come out skewed sometimes in photo shoots. Um, and just, yeah, keep it bright and black colored because again, what's gonna draw your eye to the page when you're looking at uh, the paper or online is color. Um, and again, don't forget the digital desks. So again, try to get some unbranded video too, if you can, to send with the release and the pictures to the digital desks. And most importantly, especially with all things GDPR, don't forget to get consent. So you can, you, there are consent forms, I'm sure that you can draw down from online just to say who the person is and that they consent to you using those photos or images or quotes for use in marketing materials, press releases online, etc. So here's some examples of some photos that we've taken. I'll let you digest them there for a moment. So top left, this is a shoot that we did for Cork City Culture Night. Um, and again, as I mentioned a while ago, action shots are fantastic. So this beautiful ballerina in the background jumping, but then we also managed to get the branding in at the front. So that was a clever way of doing it. Um, you know, you're getting your brand in there, but also your, your eye is drawn to it straight away because of the dancer. You'll see down below kids, um, again, kids work on the on the bottom two. You will see next to that then at the bottom, a beautiful girl with her dog that was launching a pet store. Um, you know, again, you've got the diversity side of things in there. You'll see there in the middle right, that's a taste of West Cork Food Festival. That's down in Baltimore. Um, and above again, you've got a dog. And then this top one here with the fish, 
um, that was done for uh, Cork Craft Month. So this was a craft that a craftsperson made um, and we floated it in the sea. We had the photographer actually in the sea taking the shot um, and that landed in the likes of the Irish Times picks of the week and things like that as well. So as you can see, it's all trying to think creatively, think differently, think about something that hasn't been done already, think about what would land on the front page of the paper or on the back page of the paper or as the key lead picture for the story. So then media relations, I'm just looking at my time here now. How am I doing for time? I'm about to... You're fine, Judy. Um, yeah. Another five minutes. Five minutes, perfect. Yeah, that's grand. So media relations then, as I said, pitch emails and the follow-ups. Again, as I mentioned, are you pitching to the right person? Have they covered your business or the topic that, you do, that, that you're covering yourself? Have they covered that or your industry before? Um, it needs to be a brief introduction to the, to the story. You can lose, use slightly more casual language, but never include anything that you don't want published. Um, make the journalists' lives easier, as I mentioned, short and snappy bullet points, you know, get the main hooks across and always remember who you're talking to, personalise it if you can. Don't be saying to whom it may concern or hi there or whatever, you know, it, it, find out who the journalist is and address them. Attach no more than two or three images to the email, um, which are a total of no more than eight to ten megabytes, because a lot of companies, uh, as well as media houses, have a limit on the size of attachments that they can receive by email. So what you can always do is pick your favorite two or three images and say in your email that you have additional images should they require them. What you could also do is you could include a WeTransfer link to all of the rest of the images within the body of the email too. Follow the journalists, read their stories, listen to their stories and engage with them um, and the media houses on social media, um, LinkedIn, you know, Twitter. Twitter actually traditionally, or not, well, not so traditionally, in the last number of years has been quite a good source for journalists to get the, the first um, scoop on a story. So they'll see something in real time and then they'll act on it, they'll fact check and then they'll either run it or not, depending on whether it's true. Um, stay informed and on top of topical issues and follow up. As Mary Hopkins always says, I don't hear you on the phones, lads. We should have been on the phones all the time and we are on the phones all the time, ringing the journalists, talking to them every day, um, you know, making sure that they got the stories. If they're not interested, finding another hook to try and get coverage with them, etc, etc. Other PR activities then, as I mentioned, you can enter awards, you know, there's great publicity in entering awards, um, you know, when you get to the semi-finals and the finals and so on, and then the coverage on the night. Join business networks, um, you know, be active and ask questions at events. I'm always the first person to ask a question at event because you want people to know that you're there and who you are. Um, Another great tip I got from Mary Hopkins. Uh, go to other networking events and get in the photos and the videos. Again, you're getting coverage for yourself for free. You know, picture that the recent such and such event was Fiona Ryan of Ludgate Hub. You know, you're getting the coverage out there. Look at sponsoring events or networks or e-zines or podcasts. Um, and if you don't have much budget, there's plenty of grants out there that you can get for training or that you can get to implement campaigns. Like I know the local enterprise offices do trading online vouchers that we've done a lot of work with um, people for. And, and there's plenty of others. And I know you had a presentation, I think, at the start, didn't she? Um, episode one or two on, on Leo um, and everything that they can do for you. Um, and then the final tips, know your audience, know your message, think like a reporter, Banish buzzwords and cliches, junk the jargon. So if your audience doesn't know the lingo, then don't use it. Keep it tight, you know, short and sweet. Make it plain and simple. Leave the symbols and abbreviations on your phone. Uh, get active, um, proofread it, and best of luck with it. That was fantastic, Judy. Thank you so much. Um, I loved from the start the timeline of communication right through the centuries and how the pandemic shapes communication styles thereafter. Um, the four W's and the H, um, thinking smart all of the time. 
and always communicating what the hook is and what is that hook. A lot of people don't sit back and say, right, what is the hook to this particular communication that I'm putting out there? Um, I suppose just for myself, Judy, should there always be a call to action in whatever you're communicating? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's the it, again. It's all about measurement, um, and it's about showing results too. So you know, a lot of the time, we all know marketing and finance can be kind of at loggerheads in a way. Um, so if you can show your return on investment to your management or to your finance team and to yourself, um, then the best way to do that is have a call to action. So, for example, you know, if you are running a tv ad you know and you want to drive someone to your website you could have www.ludgate.ie forward slash tv and you can have a dedicated landing page uh, for anyone that goes to that which is a replica of whatever landing page you want on your website be it a sign up form or be it a buying a product or whatever it is you're showing your return on investment. And what's the whole point? Yes, we, you know, we have brand awareness campaigns that we want to do, but you want people to go to your website or your socials or whatever to know more about you. So definitely a call to action. Yeah. So um, a few questions have come in here. Uh, so Sam, any tips for getting to the person you need to be talking to without dismissing or undermining the person uh, you may have on the phone or email? Um. I suppose it depends on the context of it all. Um, but, you know, what we would do is we would, you know, if, if there are a number of business editors, for example, we would send the release to that number of business editors and whoever comes back to us and wants to run the piece, then brilliant. You know what I mean? So if they want to run the piece, I don't know if there's a necessarily a need to go higher than them. Um, it really depends on the context. If you want to maybe send me a private message on Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, and maybe give, give me a bit more context around it, then I can advise because I wouldn't say go over their head unless it was absolutely necessary. So another message there from Celia, would you recommend one specific tool to register and have access to journalist contact details? Um, well, becoming a member of the PR Institute of Ireland um, is part of that. Um, so, yes, obviously, we're in business for the last 32 years and we've built up a great relationship with journalists around the country. Um, but if you're a member of the Public Relations Institute of Ireland, um, you also have act access to a media contacts directory. Um, but again, there's certain um, boxes you have to tick to become a member of the PRII. Um, and again, the thing is, you know, if, if you take agencies like ourselves who are talking to them all day, every day and emailing them every day, they're going to prioritize our emails over some random email that comes in that they've never heard of before. You know what I mean? So it's about building the relationships with them just as much as it is getting their email addresses. It's about engaging and building relationships with them, too, which takes a lot of time, because as you can imagine, they're getting hundreds of emails, if not thousands every day. Um, so that would be. The, but but as I mentioned earlier as well, read the papers, listen to the radio shows. You know, you'll see in some papers that they'll have their email addresses um, you'll, or they'll have their social media handles or whatever. So you can engage with them through that. If you can't join the PRII, engage with them through that and you can build your own database that way then. Uh, okay, one from Kieran here. Is there one tool that you would recommend for measuring impact? And I think you you pretty much covered, um, or you, you mentioned a few tools there in terms of Google Analytics, Google Alerts. Um, you also mentioned media monitors. Um, so yeah. you could expand a little bit there, Judy. Absolutely. There's a number of media monitors out there. Um, so what you can do is, you would pay a monthly monitoring fee for, these are for, we'll say for traditional media, so for press and radio, uh, and actually online now as well. Um, you would pay a monthly fee for them to monitor certain keywords for you, um, and then you pay per clipping. So any clipping that comes through that's relevant to the campaign that you're running, you pay like two euro or something like that. Um, but the monthly fee might be, we'll say, 99 euro. Um, and um, yeah, so then that helps you and that gives you the listenership, the readership, the circulation, all of the key stats that you need to kind of show the bosses or the powers that be or all the key stats to kind of say to you, OK, that was worth spending my time on that. You know what I mean? 
Um, so yeah, there are a number of media monitors out there. Uh, you've got the likes of Kantar, uh, Rupoint, um, Clearwater, I think is another one. There's a, there's a good few out there. If you just Google um, media monitors Ireland, you'll see there's a, there's a whole host of them out there. And just get onto them all and see what the best package you can get is. Um, as I said, some of them you can own, you can just register for press clippings only. Um, and because you know, press might you might get more coverage on press than you might on radio. So you probably know what radio coverage you're going to get. So you can listen in and record that yourself. Press, you know, you might be it might be landing in a number of places. And then online, as I said, you can set up your Google alerts and you can just do searches every day just to keep on top of your coverage. Fantastic. Um, Julie, thank you so much for answering those questions. Uh, we are nearly, we're actually at time. Um, so, Judy, if anybody wants to reach out to you afterwards uh, to engage the services of Hopkins Communication, or uh, they can do so, I presume, yep. through LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, yeah, so you'll see in my background here, um, we have www.h-c.ie, um, but you can email me at judy, J-U-D-Y, at h-c.ie, or as I said, just look me up, Judy Hopkins, on um, LinkedIn and Facebook, and then on Twitter and Instagram, I'm at Judy Hops, J U D Y H O P S. Fantastic, Judy. Thank you so much for taking the time out today, and thank you so much to all of our attendees. Um, this event is obviously recorded, and it will be on our website over the coming days. If anybody wants wants to watch back through this incredible presentation, thank you, Judy, for all of the information. No problem, and thanks for having me. And hopefully, I'll see you all down in West Cork soon. Absolutely, call into us. All thanks, right, thanks, Fiona. Judy. Thanks, Cheers. everybody. Bye bye. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs>